You're listening to the Vacation Rental Success Podcast. This episode is brought to you by the Vacation Rental Formula's own Virtual Vendor Showcase. The Virtual Vendor Showcase is a virtual online exhibitor hall, giving you the opportunity to browse products and services that may be of value to you and your business, all with video testimonials from people who have used a product or service and talk about how their business has been transformed because of it. Head across to vacationrentalformula.com forward slash VVS to find out more. Now, let's get started. Here's your host, Heather Bayer. Well, today I am talking about something that I've been researching for a little while. It's about content creation. And you know that I talk a lot about content creation, but I sort of had an aha moment very late in the game. And I'm doing some things very differently at the moment on my website and blog. And I want to share that with you. So here we go. This is the Vacation Rental Success Podcast, keeping you up to date with news, views, information and resources on this rapidly changing short-term rental business. I'm your host, Heather Bayer, and with 25 years of experience in this industry, I'm making sure you know what's hot, what's not, what's new and what will help make your business a success. Welcome to another episode of the Vacation Rental Success Podcast. This is your host, Heather Bayer, and I've had some technical issues these past few days. My laptop fried on me, and then I took it to the repair guy, and he had problems getting a new clamshell from Apple. So it's been been over a week now, and I'm now walking around the house with an iMac under my arm instead of a laptop. I mean, seriously, I did say, well, this would be great. You know, I don't have my laptop, so I'm going to wean myself off my awful habit of walking around everywhere. You know, if I just go from one room to another, got to take my laptop with me because you never know when you have to check an email and sit down and look at it because I, I don't tend to use my phone a lot. I spent years and years and years with no cell signal. So I never got into the habit of sitting and staring at my phone. And now it is, my eyesight isn't as good as it was. So it's just too small. So back to carrying my iMac around, which I found myself doing yesterday. I went from my office to my studio where I do my podcast and brought it down here. And then I thought, I'm going to go and do a little bit of work in my sunroom. So I carried the iMac up to the sunroom and then later on it went back to the office and I thought enough is enough and took myself out for a walk instead. However, that gets me on to the tech issues because when I brought my laptop down to my studio to set up interviews that I was doing, one with Sue Jones of HR for VR which was going to come to you today. Well, it's not. That's next week now. And also my good friend, Andy Medic from Sea Change Vacation Rentals. And I was doing interviews with both of those delightful people yesterday and sadly had to say, I'm so sorry to both of them for just not being able to get my tech set up working well enough. So hopefully I'll be able to get that done this afternoon, talk to Sue, talk to Andy later this week. And those interviews will be coming to you over the next couple of weeks. So for now, you've just got me because I didn't have anything to fall back on. And this is it. I'm going to do a solo episode today and share with you something that I've been doing recently that sort of gave me a bit of an aha moment, something that happened on a Google search and it got me down a rabbit hole and made me realize that I'm way behind the game in one particular area. So we're talking today about content. So we're talking today about the pillar and cluster method of creating blog posts that actually get seen much, much more than independent blog posts that you just churn out and just post and that they ultimately come to the bottom of the page and then disappear. This method allows a blog post that you write to be seen over and over again. It just doesn't get lost in the melee. But I want to just go back to the whole business about content, because I don't know how many of you are actually producing content for your websites. 
And when you think about it, if you've got a website and you haven't got content on it, how are you getting people to see that site? Because people are not going onto Google and Googling rental vacations, short-term rental vacations in your area. They don't need to do that. They can just go straight to Airbnb and put in the location. They can go to Verbo and put in the location. Same with booking.com. Why would they bother to actually Google more words than they can put into the Airbnb box or the Verbo box, etc.? Do you get my drift? People just aren't asking anymore. I used to Google cottage rental in Ontario. And well, I do I Google that now just to check it out, see how if I'm still on page one. But you will find Airbnb, you'll find Verbo, you'll find TripAdvisor, you'll find Booking.com. You might find some of the other up and coming listing sites. So people aren't, aren't doing that because they can go directly there. Okay, so that's number one. The second thing is that people are Googling questions, questions about the location. Things like, what is the best beach in Eleuthera? You, you know, I've talked about the island of Eleuthera in the Bahamas a lot and finding a site called Best Beaches of Eleuthera. People are Googling things like that. Where can I get the best ice cream in a location? Where is, where can I, where, where's the best dog park in Destin? Where can I take my dog for a hike? That sort of thing. When, where can I take my dog on a beach? These are the things that people are asking on Google. So your job is to answer those questions in your content. Now, this is not new. I've, I've said this over and over again. And in fact, the whole business of is content king is not new. Did you know that that expression, content is king, was coined by Bill Gates? It was an essay that he wrote in 1996. And he said, thinking back, you know, we're 25 years ago. One of the exciting things about the internet is that anyone with a PC and a modem can publish whatever content they can create. In a sense, the internet is the multimedia equivalent of the photocopier. It allows material to be duplicated at low cost, no matter the size of the audience. The internet also allows information to be distributed worldwide at basically zero marginal cost to the publisher. Opportunities are remarkable, And many companies are laying plans to create content for the internet. 25 years ago. For some, this message has not hit home. You know, the fact is that content is still king in most industries. And some people will say that, yeah, okay, content is king, but engagement is queen. And that may be more important, but you have to start with the foundations for connecting with people. And in doing that, you have to answer their questions. So, I have battered this one to death, I am quite sure. And over the years, I've created a lot of blog posts to create content to answer questions that my guests and my owners are answering. And it's all on my website. But I have not been getting the traction. I really haven't. I haven't been getting enough people seeing these blog posts. And we promote them all the time. We'll promote, write a blog post. It will go up on our Pinterest page, on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, wherever we can promote it, we will do. And that simple promotion will bring a certain amount of people back to the site. But this is a very physical task. We're out there promoting each piece of content. And what I want is for people to actually find it without me necessarily promoting it. So this comes back to a blog post I wrote. Oh, I wrote it for the new new website. So it was only eight months ago. It's about eight months ago that we launched our new website. And it was not a very long post. It was called Best Places to Rent a Cottage in Ontario. So it was quite general. We have a lot of different locations. And I had written this post, which covered each of our seven major locations. And I, it was very short, very short paragraph. There was an image. I'll put a link to it at the end of the show notes. You can go check that out. But a uh, short description, image, and then just a couple of the major things that people might like to go see and do and links to them. And I posted that and really thought no more about it. And then it was a month, a couple of months ago, I was 
idly keyword researching as we do. And I looked up best, I think it was best lakes in Ontario or best lakes to rent a cottage in Ontario. And in the section on page one, and I don't know if you, you must have come across this. There's a section that says people also ask. And it has a little list of alternative sites you could go to for the different questions that people are asking related to the one that you've put in the search bar. And I put something about, you know, what are the best lakes to to be? And in the people also ask was my blog post on best places to rent a cottage in Ontario. And that intrigued me. And I started throwing in some other questions. And it was quite amazing that this post comes up over and over again. So I did a little bit more background searching as to how this actually happens, how this blog post had got there. And the answer is really is that that post covers a lot of different questions that people are asking because it's a more generalized post. It covers different areas. It has outbound links to some attractions and to some events and to some places that people can go and do activities, etc. So it appears that it is that type of post that is attracting this attention and that got it into the PAA spot, people also ask. So I then went and had a look at whether, you know, how valuable is that? How valuable is it to be in that PAA section? And I came across an article on AREFS, that's A-H-R-E-F-S dot com, and I'll put a link to that in the show notes. I came across this article that said, really, not a lot of people do go. They don't often click on those links. But then I've read further into the article, and I do suggest you go and have a look at this. It's really interesting that the websites that go into the People Also Ask section don't often vary. Google keeps producing these over and over again for different types of questions. So it could be, that's why I kept seeing it for Best Lakes in Ontario or best places for a vacation in Ontario, places to go on the water in Ontario and rent a cottage, etc. Because people's questions are getting longer. And the other thing to note is that Google Voice is becoming more and more relevant. More people are asking questions using Google Voice. Their questions are becoming more conversational. So Google has a lot more material to work with when it's producing its results. So that's why this PAA section will continue to deliver the same content over and over again for different sounding questions or questions with slightly different wording. So the fact that only a very small percentage will click on that on one display is not as relevant when your blog post is coming up in a gazillion different searches. Do you get my drift? You need to go to that AREFS article and have a look. It, it was fascinating. So I then went back to this article and thought, it's not very long. I wonder what I can do to better it. Okay, let's set that one on one side for a moment because I want to talk about something else. The other rabbit hole that I've disappeared down this week. And that was the thought that keep churning out these blog posts and they're disappearing. So what can I do to get them to be more of them to be seen? You know, I don't want to spend time writing a blog post and then where's it gone? Nobody ever gets to see it unless I specifically promote it. And you know, on Vacation Rental Formula, there's over 500 blog posts that I've written over the years. And, you know, I can't even find them now. So what's the purpose? Why are we doing this? Whatever is the point? So In my searching and scrolling around, I came across a HubSpot article. Now, if you haven't spent at least an hour a week going through HubSpot blog posts, you're really missing out because there's some really, really valuable stuff in there. I came across some information on pillar posts. And a pillar post is a website page that provides a comprehensive overview on a topic. And in this post on HubSpot, they were talking about the complete re-engineer they did on their website back in 2018. And they realized exactly the same thing as I've realized just recently, three years later, that their blog posts, they had thousands, thousands, not hundreds, thousands of blog posts on their site, and they just weren't organized. They were just being thrown out there, and they may have been in categories, but they weren't getting seen as much as they should be. So they totally 
redid their information or blog area based on the premise that if you write pillar pages, this comprehensive overview, and then have a cluster of topics that are related to it, and every one of those topics links back to that pillar page. And the result is this interconnected content experience that delivers really good value to the reader. And it also, and this is the most important point, it firmly establishes to Google that you're an authority on the topic. So for example, I'm going to give you an example of something that I'm going to start doing on my site from here on. And I'm just about to start producing some really big pillar posts. The first one I'll be doing is going back to my post, Best Places to Rent a Cottage in Ontario, and taking the 700 and 700 odd words that it is and bulking it out to around 2000, which is an optimum number of words for a pillar post, around 2000 to two and a half thousand. It's, it's the length of a small ebook, which leads me on to something else that every pillar post you do can be converted into a small ebook book or a PDF that people can download. If they don't want to read it straight away, they can download it and come back to it. And in the course of that, they've given you an email address. So therein lies another benefit. So best places to rent a cottage in Ontario, I've started to expand and I'm building more content into it. And I'm linking out within that post to other posts on my site. So I'm linking you know, internal linking, if you like. So somebody is reading through, and as I say, you can go have a look at it. If you read through the first section on Eastern Ontario, I talk about the Rideau Canal. Now the Rideau Canal is very, very special for one of many reasons, but the major one is that the Rideau Canal in the winter in Ottawa becomes the world's longest skating rink when it ices over. And that's a 7.8 kilometre section. But in fact, the Rideau Canal has 202 kilometres of waterway and goes through a number of towns. Now, I have some other blog posts on my site that talk about some of these towns. So I can link out to those. We also, something that's new that we're doing, we're now promoting a company called Le Boat. So we're selling river uh, the rentals of boats on the Rideau Canal. So I'm writing a blog post about renting a boat instead of renting a cottage. So in that pillar post, it will link out to that post on renting a boat. So in each of my sections, I'm going to be linking out or doing that internal linking out to other posts on the website. The second part of it is that those each of those topic posts in this cluster, which is linked back to the pillar page, you still with me? Each of those topic posts will link back to that pillar post at some point. So people can stay within your site. They can go from pillar post to topic to topic, come back to the pillar post. They're not getting lost and they're getting huge value for their search time and they're spending longer on your site. I'm going to come back to talking about how you do this in a second, but I just want to give you a couple of examples that I'm planning for the moment. We're a pet friendly company, always have been and always will be around 70% of our properties are pet friendly. So we're renowned for accepting pets. We have it emblazoned across the website in different places. We do not charge a fee for pets. We get a ton of traffic from our pet owners who come and rent with us because we are so accepting of their fur friends and we don't charge for it. So I do have a number of blog posts about bringing your pet and I have a packing list, the things you need to pack for your pet. I have a post on the places to take your dogs for a hike, that sort of thing, but no pillar post. So we are now producing one called Taking Your Dog to Cottage Country. And it's going to be, it's an overview. Remember, a pillar post is an overview. It doesn't go into detail on anything because your topic posts present that detail. So if somebody's going through a pillar post that's about taking your dog to cottage country and there's a section on what happens if you're pet gets sick. 
And there's a few lines on that, and that will link out to another post called How to Find a Vet in Cottage Country, because it's actually not easy to find a vet in, in our area that will accept a pet that's not already a patient, particularly at, at, at this time. So I made a list of the topic posts that could go underneath my pillar post of taking your dog to cottage country. And I have how to find a vet in cottage country, as I just said, best dog friendly hikes, protecting your pet against ticks in cottage country, the packing list, the ultimate packing list for bringing your pet and tips for keeping your pet cool in a long, hot summer. So I've got this pillar post, taking your dog to cottage country and one, two, three, four, five shorter posts, 500 to 750 words that become part of that cluster of interconnected posts that are going to deliver tremendous value to the reader and tell Google that we really are an authority on the topic because Google loves that internal linking. My second pillar is cottage country wildlife. We have a lot of four-legged and many-legged creatures. (laughs) So I'm going to do an overview on, you know, what you can expect to see in cottage country from moose to deer to bears to chipmunks and squirrels and fishers and down to the bugs, black fly, mosquitoes. So that will be created in different sections. You know, the big stuff, the small stuff and the very, very small stuff. And then it will link out to different posts. So I've got how to avoid ticks. Ticks are prevalent in so many areas at the moment. So how to avoid ticks. We have a wonderful organization in one of our locations that people will take injured turtles from all over the province, go to Kawartha Turtle Rescue. So I'm going to interview the people at Kawartha Turtle Rescue and create a post from that called Meet KTR. I'm going to do a post called 10 Bear Aware Tips. You know, if you're hiking in cottage country, you need to wear a bell, wear a little bell around your neck so that the bears can hear you coming and maybe carry some pepper spray. And then I'm going to do one on best bug sprays. So each of those areas on the big animals, the small animals and the very, very tiny ones will have a link out to a topic post. Do you get the idea? I could keep going, but I shall not because I want to talk to you about how you actually put this post together because I'm issuing you a challenge. Everybody that's listening, if you've got a website and you've got a collection of random blog posts, I'm issuing you a challenge to create a pillar, at least one pillar post and, and connect all your smaller posts to it and then follow your Google Analytics and see how this all works. So how do you choose the core topic for your pillar page? Number one, it should be specific to your industry and it should support one of your products or services in the sort of educational stage of your guest's journey. So you've got to put yourself in your guest's shoes. What are they searching for when they start looking to rent in your area? So it's got to be evergreen. So it's not, doesn't cover events or things that are happening on particular dates. So it should, could, should be something that's going to last on your website a long time. It should be broad, but not overly broad. And it should be a topic that can be broken down into several supporting topics. Now, as I say, there's so many posts on HubSpot about this. But Leslie Yee from HubSpot says, when determining topics for pillar pages, you should ask yourself, would this page answer every question the reader who searched whatever keyword they're searching had? And is it broad enough to be an umbrella for 20 to 30 posts? I know that's a lot. That is a lot. So as a rule of thumb, Leslie gives the following insights Most of us have been looking at long tail keywords. And she says, if you're trying to get your page just to rank for that long tail keyword, that is not a pillar page. If your page offers an in-depth explanation of a narrow topic, that's not a pillar page either. But if it discusses many aspects of a broader topic, it probably is a pillar page. Okay, that, that gets that out of the way. So how do you build it? So this is a little different from an ordinary blog post because it's a lot longer. So you've got to create it and clearly map it out as a scannable 
guide. I've seen Matt Landau do this in many of his posts, that it has an index at the start. It's like an anchor linked table of contents at the top of the of an article. So it almost functions like the chapters of a book. So let's go back to my best cottage locations in Ontario. Then in my chapters would be the different areas. It would be Muskoka, Kawartha, Eastern Ontario, Parry Sound, etc. For my article on wildlife, it would be broken down to very simply large animals, smaller animals and insects. But I'll probably have to think about that and maybe uh, maybe do some slightly different type of taxonomy there. So it functions like the chapters of a book and then it links to the main headers throughout the page. So if you don't know how to do anchor linking, look it up or there's, there's, yeah, there's plenty of YouTube videos out there that show you how to do anchor linking in a, in a, a blog post. And what it does, it allows users to find the specific sections they're looking for and jump straight to them. So you've got your table of contents, then you're going to give your core topic definition, which is an overview, a summary of what the whole thing is about. And then you also have to pay attention to your tags, your title tags, H1 title tag, which contains your core topic keyword. I mean, if you're using WordPress and the Gutenberg format, then it's all in there for you. You're going to do an H1 for your title, your main title tag, and then H2 tags for each of your main section headers, and then any subsections give it an H3 tag. Google likes this. Google picks up on these tags. So that's really important. And then you make sure you have um, internal links in each section. So these internal links go to relevant sources that provide more in-depth information on the topics. And they link to, and they can also link to top performing pieces on your website that fall within different sections uh, of your pillar page. So, you know, you don't have to stick rigidly to I'm in this section and I've got to go to the topic that meets this section. You can go out to um, to other sections as well. You also have external links here, and these are sources that validate your claims and they add credibility. So if I was writing a pillar post on writing pillar posts, then I would probably use some external links to some of these HubSpot articles. You know, that's where I got my information from. So I'm going to um, link back to those in the same way as I'm saying, just go to the end of the show notes. Make sure you have some great images that support your content and include alt text on those images. For those of you who create your own blog posts, you'll know what that alt text is. It's, it, it's just that little description that explains what your image is. Then you also want some back to the top buttons, which are placed in each main section or at the very least at the bottom of the page. So somebody gets down that far, you can, they can link straight back to the top. It makes it easier for users to jump back to the top of the page so they don't have to scroll back up. You also want some landing page elements there because you want, still want this page to focus on increasing conversions. So make sure you've got a form somewhere on the page so that they can, users can contact you for help. And then of course your CTA, your call to action, and this is where, you know, people have read all this wonderful information. They might want to download it. You don't want them to have to copy and paste the whole thing. So create a PDF and give them the opportunity to download that in exchange for their email address. It might be that you have another guide that you want to offer them. So for example, in my area on pets, I have my ultimate packing list for taking your dog on a vacation and they can download that. So that's how you create a pillar page. And once you've done it, it's time you're going to share it with everybody. So, you know, here we go back to sharing it on social media. You've got it on your website. You're going to share it on social media. You might create some ads to promote it even if it's really, really valuable. Uh, mention it in newsletters and emails. In, you refer back to it in other blog posts other blog posts outside that pillar and cluster, mention it to people in person, just I'm doing this now, and then mention it appropriately in industry forums. That is one way of, of really getting that information out. And then what you hope is then going to happen 
is that it will get picked up by Google. Either it could be get picked up as a snippet. I'm not going into snippets at the moment. That's uh, that's topic of another episode, I think. But certainly in that people also ask section, if you get picked up in there, then that's huge bonus. And I know this every time I look at my Google Analytics stats, that post, and that in fact, that's, that's how I found out about it because I couldn't figure out why this post was ranking, was, was being viewed so often. And that's when I went back to the post and yeah, I just did a bit of exploring and found that it was in, in this people also ask section and like, yes, Eureka, I did it somehow. I didn't do it deliberately and I got this result. And now I am doing this deliberately. I am going all out to get more of my posts in this people also ask section. But just going back onto this basic premise of this pillar post, create this long pillar post and then link out to other more relevant, more specific posts on a specific topic. And then make sure that in those, in those specific posts, you are linking back to the pillar post. I mean, for me, this is a work in progress at the moment. It's not something that I've really spent much time on. I am going to be spending a lot more time on this and to see how it works. Certainly going to be doing it in my owner section on the website because, and that that's something else. When you're thinking about writing a pillar post, you don't have to write it from scratch if you already have a lot of posts already in place that you could combine to make your pillar post. With, with my owner section, I'm going to go through all the posts that I've done sort of how to rent out your cottage. And I've done a number of those and I think I could combine some of those to create a pillar post on how to rent out your cottage and then link out to all my smaller posts like the five best appliances you best small appliances you should have and the top safety concerns you should be thinking about something like that but yeah work in progress I'll share how I'm going on that because I'm going to start really following my Google Analytics as I am going through this process so and if anybody else ha- is is thinking about doing this I'd love to see or, or you've already done it. You probably, you know, it's three, three years since HubSpot made this move. And when I started looking, uh, Googling pillar posts and cluster topics, there was a gazillion articles on it. So I'm way behind the drag curve on this. Maybe many of you have already, are already implementing this and I'm, I'm just catching up. But if you're not, and if you'd like to get going on this and want to share your pillar posts, then absolutely send them to me. I'd love to see them. It would be a lot of fun. So as ever, as ever, you can find me at heather at vacationrentalformula.com and uh, and send me your thoughts. But I'd also love it if you would add them to the show notes. So if you want to share your blogging, with other people who are listening to this podcast, please go over to vacationrentalformula.com forward slash VRS 390. Oh my gosh, we got to 390. Go over there and mention it in the, in the comments at the end of the show notes, then you can share it with other people. That would be absolutely fantastic. So talking about episode 390, that means we are just 10 weeks away from episode 400. And I'm still trying to think of the best way to celebrate 400 episodes. And I'd love to hear your thoughts. What would you like to hear for that 400th episode? Should I bring back just one person? Should I do a panel of amazing people? You know, maybe bring together Matt Landau, Tyan Marsink, Evelyn Badia. I don't know. What do you think? What do you think? I'm I'm really interested to hear from you. Um, if you're a supplier out there and you want to be featured on the 400th episode, get in touch with me because I'm thinking about doing a giveaway, which of course is great visibility for you and you'll get mentioned on the show, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're a supplier out there and you're interested in this, just get, just let me know. And yeah, I'm just going to ponder on it for the next two weeks. 
I'm not going to leave it to the very last minute like I did for episode 300, 200 and 100. I am going, I am planning it and it's going to take me eight weeks to do so. So you've got two weeks to get your ideas into me. I mean, if, if you go to the Facebook page at the Business of Short-Term Rental and Property Management, I'm putting a post in there to ask for suggestions. So you could go over there and post your suggestions as well. All right, that's it. That's it for me. I'm going to go, I'm going to go and phone my Apple guy and see if my laptop has been repaired yet because I am interviewing Sue Jones this afternoon and I want to make sure that all the tech thingies are all ironed out beforehand. So I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day and I will be back with you again next week with Sue Jones. So tune on in. You've been listening to the Vacation Rental Success Podcast, and we hope you've enjoyed this episode. This episode was brought to you by the Vacation Rental Formula's own Virtual Vendor Showcase, your go-to location when searching for new products and services for your vacation rental business. Head across to vacationrentalformula.com forward slash VVS to find out more. It's been a pleasure as ever being with you. If there's anything you'd like to comment on, then join the conversation on the show notes for the episode at vacationrentalformula.com. We'd love to hear from you. And I look forward to being with you again next week.